Yeah, I guarantee people who use a lot of paper score better on the guarantee. Why is there like a vision? All right, here we go. Got recording is running, so yep, it's working. All right, number seven. Okay, first thing you've got to memorize is when you read a problem and it asks if some formula is concave up, concave down, increasing, decreasing, like characteristics of the formula, if you don't have a graph, you can't figure it out with the formula itself. Like you shouldn't even try. If you try, you will do it in a way that will lead to either the wrong answer or on the written section they'll give you zero credit because they will know you're doing it the wrong way. So I see this formula here, and they're asking if these points have a concave down shape. But I'm not working on the calculator section, so I don't get to graph that. Uh, you could try and use your graphing techniques you learned in a previous class. Uh, I don't like that method. I think it's too hard to remember all that stuff. So I have a better method. Not mine, but it's the method I'm going to show you. Uh, Danica's chart, of course. F is concave down. So write this on your paper. F is concave down when F double prime is negative. Or F. Yes. Hey, two for Ryan. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. Come on. Back up, you dumb machine. Okay, but warning. Hey, without a graph, it really is not possible to figure out that f prime is decreasing either. Yeah. Like we've got to focus on this. So when you don't have a graph, you're going to use a new tool that we will talk about today. That new tool is called a sign chart. Okay, we good. Cool. So we need a sign chart of f double prime because we want to figure out when the sign of f double prime is, in this case, negative. That's our goal. Awesome. So this is why I always say, can't do unit three unless you can do unit two. Because the first thing you gotta do is find the derivative of that thing. Find the derivative or the double derivative? Second derivative. But of course, to find the second derivative, I've gotta find the first first. So. Um, I don't like using y, so I'm going to tell the grader that y is what I call f of x. Therefore, f prime, I'm just going to jump around the room here. So Sarah, what would f prime be? I have three of the four. I have three of the four. Now, because the variable is in the denominator, Yeah, what would be the, so I'm calling this out. So what would be the formula for f prime? I'm going to do dy, d, I'm going to do dy dx equals d dx of all of this, and then I'm going to use my green rules to figure out what d dx of that is. And what would I get? Uh, 12x squared. There we go. Minus 48. Obviously. 48. X squared. 48. 5. 48. 8x. Two points for Sarah. Well done. Yeah. Questions from anyone? Awesome. So as Tara said, we've now got to go find F double prime. So go over here to Grant. What would you have me write there? Uh, you have 36 x squared. Minus 96x 
plus 48. Points for Greg. Questions from anyone? In this case, we can't avoid it by taking kind of nine Well, four. let's go over here to Matthew. Um, okay, new idea. You need to memorize that when making a sign chart, whatever you are charting should be as factored as much as possible. Sometimes there's not really much you can do, but if you can, you make sure you factor whatever you're charting. So Matthew, what are we going to make a sign chart of in this problem? So here's, here's how you answer that question. What's the actual question given to us? When is it going to happen? When's, but when is? When is y? Yeah, that formula, right? So to make it easier to talk about, I called that formula F. You're doing great. So when is F concave down? But we don't get to look at F, so we have to look at something else. What are we going to look at instead? Right, so we're going to make a sign chart of F double prime. Two points for Matthew. We're going to make a sign chart of F double prime. Therefore, we would like to have F double prime as factored as we can get F double prime to be factored. So, Nathan Rumler, how do I begin factoring F double prime? Pull out 12. Keep talking. So 12 times x squared minus 8x plus 4. Two points. Questions? So, Henry, uh, can we factor f double prime more or are we done? Not sure is the right answer. Uh, we'd like to try since it's a quadratic. So Henry, usually this and this are pretty easy. What has to go here and here? X. And they, whatever's here and here, whatever's here and here must multiply to be this. So what must go here and here, Henry? There's a, that's not wrong, but traditionally we would do something simpler. We would just say 3x and x. So two points for Henry. Any more questions? Please. Hey, why, did you, why does it have to equal 3x squared? So we're trying to figure out a way, whenever you see a quadratic expression, this is a quadratic expression. Yeah. We will attempt, and in most cases on the HP test, we'll be successful. I think I've only seen one where I wasn't successful. That's one over 50 years of test questions. Um, to write it as two factors multiplying. So the way we factor is we just have to think backwards. Is how I like to do it. So Simon, is 3x multiplied by x 3x squared? So that part works. Then what I do is I jump to the end. Simon, tell me two values that multiply to make 4. So it's, it's got to be either one of those. So let's just try them. So I come over here in my work and just do some scratch work here. So I have 3x, uh, let's do 4 and let's do 4 and 1. Two points for Simon. I don't put in any plus or minus yet. Oops. Okay. Delena, we multiply this out. Don't worry about the signs, but what will we get? Two points for Delena. So, 
So Ryan, does it work? Does that, can that become, can this right here become this right here? No, so that didn't work. So Ryan says we wanted to put a two and a two. Yeah, I'll show that in a second. So Claire, multiply that out. So Clara, if I put in the right plus and minus, can I make this become this? Yeah. Yeah. What do they? What do I write? So I want this to become this. Yeah, but they both need to be negative. So I get the negative 8x. And this would be positive, so I get the positive 4 over here. Questions from anywhere? Cool. So Reese, if I want this now to look to be the same as this, what plus and minus do I put here? So this needs to be negative, and this needs to be negative, and now these two will match. So that's the factoring. Question? So when there's like just a x squared, like, and then the, the 3 isn't there, the way that I used to solve it was like you had to multiply it to be that, and you had to add it up to be the last yeah, thing. So but that doesn't work with this because of the 3? The 3 fouls that up, yeah. So there's other ways to do this, but I have a hard time remembering the other methods. So I just go like this, and for AP Calc, it's usually plenty good to figure it out. So two more. That answer your question. Yeah. Pretty good? Okay, uh, next thing. Uh, write the following on your paper. If you remember to write what I'm about to tell you on the written section of the test, you will often earn one point for doing so. So it's a really crucial thing to remember to write. So you need to write down on your paper, F double prime, of x is equal to 0 or undefined, like that statement will get you a point often on a written question. Now we need to finish the statement with when. So Lucas, yes. what do I write? So. Any other x values? Um, no, wait. Wait is good. Wait. Uh, yeah, two thirds. Two thirds. Does so anyone want to talk about that? Two for Lucas. Anyone want to talk about that? Good. Oh, please, look. Why do we do that? So, two points for Lucas Harris. Hey, go talk. You can't concentrate when you talk. Um, we are building a sign chart of F double prime. The key to the sign chart, if you mess up this part, you will never get the problem right, is you must start with the values of x that cause whatever you are charting so we're charting f double prime. But whatever you are charting, you've got to figure out what x values cause what you are charting to equal 0 or undefined. And the chart is built around that. Um, the reason is 
we're trying to limit the number of things we need to test. So for example, I now know that when x is equal to 2, I got to go in order here though, so 2 thirds is less than 2, f double prime is 0, leave a little space for other numbers, uh, 2 f double prime is 0. So if I were trying to draw f double prime, there are only two x coordinates where f double prime is zero. Here and here. There are no x coordinates where f double prime is undefined. So f double prime is either going to be a graph up here like this, and then come to there and then go down here, or f double prime is going to do this. By finding these first, I ensure that I know the general, I, like I don't have to do so much testing. I don't know if that helped very much. It's not the best answer. Uh, yeah. So here. Can it just touch zero and then, and then still stay above the positive? It could have done that as well. So yeah, that would work, too, well, for Matthew. Yeah. F double prime could do this. But the key thing is this, Matthew. In this section, between these two points, x equal 2 thirds, and x equal 2, you are guaranteed that all of these values of f double prime will either be positive or all the values will be negative because there's no way for them to switch back because there's no other crossing of the x-axis. So, so you test one point, you test one point between x equal 2 thirds and x equal 2 and you've tested all of them. That's why we start with this statement right here, and that's why on the written section they give you a point for recognizing that. Good question. Two more. Please. So then you just need to test a point from the three sections? From the three sections. So the beauty of a sign chart is two, two, two things that make a sign chart an awesome tool. You don't have to worry about any numbers. All we care about is positive and negative. And you don't have to test very many points. And you get all the information you need versus an old-fashioned table where you kind of keep testing until you feel like you know enough. So I charge just test a few. Joseph, Don't you only need to test one point? Just one point. Just one point in each interval. Yep. What I meant by a few was, we'll test a point. Like, give me a number here that fits, Joseph. Zero. And then give me a number that fits. Ah! Give me a number that fits here, Joseph. And then here? Three. Yeah, that's what we meant by a few points. Just one in each interval. Two more. Why would we say zero or undefined? Why would we know that it's zero? Because We will run into problems where uh, the function we're analyzing will have x values that are causing the y value to be undefined. And that can also be what I call a switch point, where the signs of what we're charting could change. But they only, the signs of what we're charting only change when, it, when the y value is either zero or the y value is undefined. That's the only way the y values can switch from positive to negative or vice versa. And this is assuming it's continuous? This one is continuous, but notice this. Two more for Clara. If f double prime did something like this, Um, yeah, this we would notice because it's piecewise. I don't think I've ever seen these problems ever given when they're piecewise. So that I don't think is going to happen to jump. Um, vertical asymptote could cause a problem, but we would recognize that because we would see the value of f double prime being undefined, and that could be where the switch occurs. So we're very safe to just note this and this, and then build the chart around it. Yeah. Please. And then when it's undefined, will there be like a key factor you can tell like the equation that like, oh. it's like. Well, it's vertical is dividing vertical by zero. Vertical, yeah, dividing by zero. Yeah, divided by zero is going to be undefined. Yeah. Square root of a negative. We don't deal with imaginary. Not for this class. This is real calculus is what they call it. Um, please. So is this why, like, 
I guess Danica's chart is so important because like if you didn't have that, then you'd have to sit and think for forever to like get get it to negative. Like um, do you write down Danica's chart before you start the test. Oh yes, <laughs> I do. Um, to be fair, before I had Danica's chart as a memory aid, I just had to keep saying it over and over again. It's just super convenient memory aid. But, so the, the information, she didn't invent the information. She organized it in a nice memory aid, yeah. Two point. What if the two went into the calculus? Say again. What? What if the two went into the calculus? <laughs> Danica's chart. Um, first of all, you wouldn't want to do that because you would feel bad about it for the rest of your life. No, but like, but, you know, know. Uh, they'd probably get some duct tape and fix that up real quick. Well, <laughs> you wore a shirt that was like Danica's chart. Well, then he's cheating, and then they'll catch you and kick him out. But what if they don't know what Danica's yeah, chart is? Yeah, what if Well, there's that. They can't have a hearing aid. They can't. 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 Just yeah, you guys know the answer to all these questions. So. Hey, we good here? Questions here? Awesome. Oh, questions? No. Oh. You're good. So, Lucy, I'm charting F double prime, which means I need to take that x equals 0 and I need to plug it into F double prime. So I come over here. It's easiest to use the factored version because we can just check one factor at a time. So this is just going to be 12. Uh, Lucy, if x is 0, what is the sign of this factor? Perfect. The number doesn't matter, only the sign. So we have a 12 times a negative. Then Lucy, if I plug in a zero into this factor, what do I get? Um, negative. Negative again. So 12 times negative times negative, Lucy, is what? Uh, Positive. Uh, sign chart, we don't care about the number. Two points for Lucy. Just the sign. Question? Please. Could you also just plug it into the first as well? Um. Oh, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will graphs always be concave? Because this one, it's negative. Class study. It's all other values outside of I'll show you a second. So the idea of a sign chart is not like a concept we need to know. It's just a way to organize. Like it's not necessarily necessary for the AP test. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's just a way of organizing information. Okay. Um, so Please. could you plug in like just that one point and then know that the next one is going to be negative? Or no, do you need to check all of them? To oh, sure good question. Hey, facts. you're saying like. Are they always going to alternate? Yeah. Uh, the answer is no, they won't always alternate. Like in the case that because Matthew was talking about where like it would go down to zero. Correct. And back up. Okay. Yeah. So I always check them. Okay. Yep. Two point. So what's, so here we go, Chris. If I take a one for X, I place that into the formula for F double prime, this factor will be what, Chris? The factor or the sign? Uh, the sign of the factor will be? Uh, positive. Perfect. The sign of this factor will be? Negative. So now I have this times 12, which was positive. Two points for Chris. Questions? We Adam, what happens when you plug in three? Well then. Well then is good. Both are going to be positive. Both factors will be positive. Yes, sir. Two points. Okay, now watch, here's Ryan's question. Watch close. What the chart is telling you is that if you start at x equal negative infinity, which is not really a true thing, you can't equal negative infinity, but if x is as negative as is negative forever, for all of these x's, all the way until we hit x equal two thirds, you're guaranteed that every y coordinate on f double prime will be positive. Therefore, you know 
that for all of those x's, oh, oh, it's concave. Oh, wait, f is concave up. We're talking about okay. for all of those x's. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's too loud. Quiet. Hey. So if you go from x equal negative infinity all the way to x equal two thirds, that's why these are the most important values. F will be have a concave up shape for all of those x's. But if we were looking at the graph of F, we would know that all the way until we get to x equal two thirds, the concavity of F must be up. Because F prime is positive. Hey. F prime is positive for all of those x coordinates. So if we just find the first one, we can know that it's since that's concave. No, you have to find the middle. Right? We just, I know, but don't we just have to find the middle and not the bottom? Um, it's possible this could have been negative as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, plus keep reminding yourself, hey, no, it's a good thought. Listen, two points. Don't forget, we're doing a lot of multiple choice right now because I found through 17 years of experience that if we start this way, the written section goes very smoothly. But you have to do this kind of stuff on the written section as well. You have no answers to pick from. So you have no idea what the result's going to be. So you have to work through it. Oh, from x equal, starting at x equal 2 thirds, every single x in between until I get to x equal 2, You're good. F double prime is negative, so F itself is concave down. Good work. Good work. So show me the correct answer on your hand, like A, B, C, or D. Show me the correct answer on your hand. It's the one everybody likes. Yes. Five points. Good work. Yes. What's that? Hey, you don't want to ask questions about the problem, of course, but the process, the idea, like any question. Okay, just five. The answer is E. The answer is E.